I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians on the land on which we meet today and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. I extend that respect to all First Nations people, their elders, past, present and emerging, joining us today. Welcome everyone. Globally, we know that demand for minerals and metals will continue to increase through population pressure and ongoing development. The World Bank report on minerals for climate action, the mineral intensity of the clean energy transition, published in 2020, shows that a lower carbon future is expected to be even more mineral intensive. This is because clean energy technologies need more materials than fossil fuel based electricity generation technologies. The figure on the left shows the total demand for 17 minerals and steel per annum using key renewable technology. These are listed in the table on the right. Three scenarios are shown based on the IEA energy technology perspective scenarios. The lowest assumes all countries will meet their Paris Agreement obligations. And the other two show scenarios which have at least a 50% chance of limiting the average global temperature increase to two degrees Celsius and less than two degrees Celsius by the year 2100. The forecast increases to 2050 are staggering, up to four and a half times the present demand, and they don't even account for the new global transition infrastructure needed to electrify a low carbon economy. The Australian government is keenly aware of these drivers and is working hard to meet this demand. Today's forum is focused on critical minerals, crucial for the proliferation of technologies and industries that have become vital for social and economic wellbeing the world over. But they are vulnerable to supply disruption and many of these minerals have been of limited economic interest until recently. This map shows the distribution of nations that lead the supply of at least one of these minerals and the percentage material that they supply. The skewed distribution of resource supply can result in supply disruptions. To identify more diverse sources of critical mineral supply, the United States Geological Survey, Geological Survey of Canada and Geoscience Australia have united their scientific research under the banner of the Critical Minerals Mapping Initiative. The inaugural meeting was held in December 2019 in Ottawa, Canada. The goals of this collaborative initiative are to promote critical minerals discovery in all three countries by developing a better understanding of critical mineral content in ore deposits, particularly in Australia and North America. Another priority is developing a better understanding of critical mineral byproduct opportunities and to identify new sources of supply through critical mineral potential mapping around the world. Key goals of the collaboration and some background are outlined in USGS published fact sheet and an EOS article, both available online. Today we focus on the first two scientific outputs from the initiative. Today's forum will proceed as follows. First, the geological surveys will outline the Critical Minerals Mapping Initiative and how it fits within the context of their geoscientific critical minerals work. This will be followed by three longer talks. The first two of these talks will focus on the new release, the new ore deposit classification scheme, and the release of the world's largest critical minerals in ores data set through a new online portal. The third talk will demonstrate some highlights of ongoing work focused on improving mineral potential mapping. After the talks, there'll be 30 minutes for discussion, so please have your questions ready for the speakers.